A journalist working in Bochi State is tested positive for the novel coronavirus, the state's deputy governor, Baba Tela, announced on Saturday. Tela, who is also the chairman of the Bochi State Task Force on COVID-19 and Lassa Fever, made the announcement at a news conference at the government house in Bochi. The deputy governor, who did not disclose the identity of the journalist, said the journalist belonged to the correspondence chapel of the Nigeria Union of Journalists in Bochi State. He advised every journalist in the state to go for tests to be sure after COVID-19 status. And now, Dr. Tuyi Mebawundu, a public health practitioner, joins us via telephone. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you. So about a month ago, uh, you warned that Nigeria might experience a surge, and in the last 24 hours, it recorded 239 cases. We now have 4,151 infections. Tell us what could have gone wrong, in spite of all the lockdown and measures taken. Now, it's not that anything has really gone wrong, but we've increased the capacity for testing, and contact tracing. When you do testing and contact tracing, you are bound to pay a, a lot of people with the disease. Hello? Hello, I can hear you. Okay, now at the moment, so, you're still about to finish your thought. Now, what um, the situation we have on our hand is that we might experience what we call a second wave or third wave of the disease. This is why. Presently, there are no vaccines, no drugs for the disease. One study has shown that only 10% of people infected uh, in the world are known now. Now, for us to have that kind of herd immunity that can protect the whole world, we need about 60% or 70% of people to be infected. Now, it is always postulated that the disease will continue to be spreading in the next 18 months. And then, without readily available vaccine, we may see the occurrence of a new cluster. Yeah, you're talking about new clusters. We are now at the community transmission uh, level. Give us an insight into uh, some of the best ways it can be managed. Now, we still have to hang on to our social distancing, improve hygiene, increase testing, contact tracing, and of course, for us to adhere to those guidelines enumerated by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. It is important because now, what we are looking for to get to the level of herd immunity that can allow us to open the economy fully is that if we have vaccine or we will have a working drug. But now we don't have. And don't let us be too optimistic. We may end up not developing a very effective vaccine. Supposing it becomes like flu where we cannot get a very effective vaccine, what do you do? We have to continue our non-drug interventions. The non-drug interventions essentially are social distancing, hand washing. They will have to keep on wearing a face mask. The that type of mask, we have to define what type of face mask, what type of material, how much protection can we uh, get from the face mask and all these things. As a matter of urgency, what should the health authorities consider as priorities in tackling this um, pandemic? We have to improve the capacity of the health system. Now, you know, uh, in the past, we we're talking about absence of isolation beds and uh, spaces to, to treat people. Now, we're seeing a lot of health workers being infected. That's a dangerous trend. Now, we need to give them abundance of personal protective equipment. The government needs to pick the whole number of spectrum of health workforce and people that can help uh, in one way or the other in mitigating the virus. Now, the other important thing is that 
we have not deepened communication sufficiently. I earlier warned that we may end up messing up this control if we don't have, we are, we are not on top of the, um, of the information system. You, re you remember recently, some pastors were proposing some funny thing. I expect the government to have met with them before now and leverage on their influence to, the, to, to disseminate proper information to their followers. So we're, we're, we're losing the information narratives to a large extent. This information is taking, taking over, and then what we're getting is that we're seeing a lot of conspiracy theories. In fact, there's a boom in conspiracy theory with this COVID-19. Well, let, let's try, and that's the point of having conversations like this so people can get uh, the proper information. Now, looking at the figures, the present figures in Lagos that is leading with 97 new cases, uh, closely followed by Bochi with 44 new cases, what would be your specific recommendations for these two states that are now the epicenters of COVID-19 in Nigeria? That of Lagos is because that we have increased the testing, obviously. So we still have to go back and ensure that we educate the people, we talk to them. They should understand that they don't have to come out if they don't need to come out. They have to use the face mask, they have to wash their hands. And because if they don't do this, they must be prepared to experience the second lockdown. There's no, there's no doubt. Nigeria is contending with the first phase. Globally, there are concerns and efforts towards preventing a second. Do you think we can, with all that you've seen um, in our measures uh, to prevent the first phase? Tell you what, the COVID-19 disease is not going to go away in hurry. Like I said, in the next 18 months, we're still expecting ongoing transmission is how we deal with it or until either we see vaccine or when we have drugs that can work effectively we may not have choice than to rely on our non-drug interventions that is what we need to deepen all right thank you and then the, way, the way we cope with it is that we have to involve every aspect from information management the health workers religious leader, everybody must be involved. And then individual must take the right decision to ensure that they don't pick the virus or transmit the virus. All right, thank you very much, Doctor, for joining us on the news. Thank you.